So in our last class, we talked about um, HNs, processes HN, which are predictable and can be used for to, to design strategies, right? Strategies to buy or sell a martingale. And in this class, we're going to talk about stopping times. So stopping times is just uh, one possible way to build such strategies. It's actually very simple. It's just a random variable. So t from omega to n. So when I write n, I include the 0. These are different possible notations. I prefer to include the 0 in the naturals. Uh, so this is in fact just a random variable, right? But it has uh, an interpretation of time. Remember that time for our purposes now is discrete. So this t having a time value is interpreted in a different way. But OK, this up to now is just a random time. What do we mean by a random stopping time? So let us recall that we have this filtration Fn, which is nothing more than a chain of sigma algebras. So we have F0 contained in F1, contained in F2, and so on and so forth. It's just a family of growing sigma algebras. And the interpretation of this is that Fn gives you the information available at time n. OK, simple enough. And the random variable t, to be called a stopping time, has to have a special relationship with these families here. So definition. We say that t is a stopping time if for every t, sorry, for every n, the event t smaller or equal than n is fn measurable. So what's the intuition behind this definition? So we're saying that t is a stop in time. If let's imagine we are in a room where things are happening in discrete time in turns, right? So there is a first turn, something happens. Second turn, something happens. Maybe some uh, dices are being thrown or some cards are being shuffled and shown. So when we say Tn smaller or equal to n, what's the kind of event that we are looking at here? It's uh, the time, the random time t happened before a fixed time n. So let's imagine, for example, t to be the time that someone decides to leave the room. So the person saw some uh, outcome of the dices and cards in the room and decided to leave. So what we are saying is that if the person decides to leave before time n, they have to be able to take this decision just by looking at the information available until time n. You cannot say, I'm going to leave the room two rounds before I lose some money. You cannot do that because two times before you lose some money is something that will happen in the future. You don't have that information. OK, so let's look at some examples of stopping times. So imagine that you have a process Xn, which is adapted to Fn. 
So we have a process adapted to a filtration. What does that mean? Simply that Xn belongs to Fn for every n. Okay, so examples of stopping times. Actually, the simplest one is a constant stopping time. So I will leave the room at time 5 and I don't care what happens. I don't need to, any information to take this decision. So let us choose a different letter. T equals little t. So t smaller or equal than n is going to depend, of course, if n is bigger than t, sorry, bigger or equal to t, then this is going to be the whole event. But if n is smaller than t strictly, this is the empty set. And these two are always measurable with any sigma algebra. So this is OK. The example is very simple. If the random time is not random, it's a stopping time. The second example, t is going to be the first time such that something happens to, sorry, uh, first time such that something happens with x. xn belongs to a, for example. Why is this a stopping time? So let's look at the event t smaller or equal than n. This is this can be written exactly as x0 does not belong sorry x0 belongs to a because if x0 belongs to a t is 0 so it's smaller or equal than n or x1 belongs to a. If x1 is, belong, is in a, then t is either 0 or 1. And you can keep going until xn belongs to a. If xn belongs to a, either it's the first time that it's in a, so t is exactly equal to n, or it's not the first time x j was already in a before, that means t is going to be small or equal to n. But in any case, this is an event, uh, is a, an intersect, an union of events all in fn. So the whole union belongs to fn. So this type of times, the first time such that something happens, these are called heating times. Are also stopping times. So we are not going deeper into stopping times for now. There will be a time for that later. But for now, we're just going to uh, use the fact that this type of definition gives us a stopping time because this will be useful in the next lecture.